lessons learned. I'm Sherry and you're watching Monday Quilt Chat. Here we are talking about all things quilty again in my world and what's going to happen this week. Um, sometimes I just never know what's going to happen so just stay tuned here and, and you'll find out what comes out of my somewhat creative brain here. <laughs> uh, I've got lots of materials to work with in the she shed. I'm still trying to whittle down uh, fabric that I have accumulated this month which is stash timber we're not buying any fabric this month uh, why because most of us if you're watching this channel or, or any other channel like it you probably got too much fabric around that we need to use <laughs> so no fabric buying for the rest of the month we're over halfway through the month I'd have to say it's been pretty easy. I don't know how it's been for you, but I have not been tempted very much. Uh, the So Yes sales, the Alaska panel sale was a little, little tempting, but I still have panels. We're working on panels and whittling those down this month. So to just jump in and buy more panels right off the bat is kind of like mm, that kind of defeats the purpose doesn't it <laughs> so <clears throat> friday i forgot to announce what our stash busting project is for this week so uh, i have that for you we are going to make a very simple four patch a baby blanket with our stash most all of us have charm packs these are these little nifty five inch squares there comes 40 42 in here and you can just do all kinds of little projects with these you can make bags with them you can make quilts with them whatever this happens to be a 30s playtime chloe's closet by moda i don't know how old this is uh i've probably had it for more than a year i'd say and I'm just going to make a real, real quick baby quilt out of it. And if you don't have a need for a baby quilt, just hang on to it. Sooner or later, you will need a baby quilt. Keep your cardboard. Use them for templates. <clears throat> so this is kind of, you know, the 1930s kiddo material. So it'll make a super cute little um, baby blanket. And I am going to use this red fabric. I've already cut up five inch squares, one in between each of these, our four patches. We'll have two reds and two of these. So you can just do them random. I'm gonna use all but two of these. So I don't know if I need to pick out now which two I don't want. Or maybe I'll just, I don't know, I don't know. I'll just have to kind of go along and sit some aside that I'm not sure about. And then at the end, I should have two left over that I don't want. This fabric, uh, I got like an end of bolt on this or something. Uh, it is called, it's from Riley Blake. It's called Land of Liberty by my mind's eye so it was probably some kind of i don't know red white and blue line but i only have this it's just a little red cute flower so i thought that would go good with this 30s playtime chloe's closet little charm pack so all we're gonna do is cut 40 of these you need five strips of width of fabric that are five inches and then cut that those strips down to five inches so you need approximately three quarters of an inch it's technically 25 inches but three-fourths of a yard is 27 inches so cut off a 27 inch hunk or look for a 27 inch hunk in your stash and use that for this grab one of your charm packs laying around and then we're just gonna make some four patches and I might actually just sit and do that while I'm talking to you here uh, I'm just gonna whip this out 
um, right quick and show you what I'm doing. I probably won't get it done by the end of this video, obviously, but I can uh, give you an idea of how things are going to go together. Very simple, very easy, very mindless, fun, not brain challenging, uh, very beginner friendly. So what I did is I put my quarter inch seam on there and I finger pressed it. So you don't have to stop and press every time if you don't want to. So I have a, a double here. I'm gonna lay this aside and then go on to my next one and put those together. <clears throat> How was your all's jelly, national soa jelly roll uh, Saturday this past weekend? How was that? Um, the Facebook group was, was active with some of their projects and I was on some other Facebook uh, project or um, groups as well looking at people's projects on that and yeah people were were very busy i will insert here right here a picture of my jelly roll project that i got finished it's just the top the top is finished uh and from a show of hands on facebook it looks like i don't need to add borders to it so I'm just gonna leave it as it is and this is the center point pattern but I had a little trouble in the center because I misread the pattern so I had to adjust the pattern a little bit but honestly I think my version looks better than the pattern I mean maybe not all would agree with that but I like mine better <laughs> so now I have two of these and I finger press those open. So all I want to do is put those red ones opposite of each other. So you can stick a pin in here on your, I almost always open my seams unless I'm following a pattern that wants you to press to one side. You certainly can press to one side if you want. This would totally work with pressing to one side. Just press to your red ones or your, your fabric that you chose to cut just press toward all of them towards that because uh, in the end they will all nest but I'll I tend to uh, press open anyway and this allows me to go ahead and keep going as well because I can finger press them open without stopping and pressing to one side so I'm gonna go ahead and make this four patch So yeah, um, I hope your Jelly Roll projects turned out the way you wanted. Uh, if you have one that you finished, uh, just the top, uh, you can send that on Friday in the email, LessonsLearnt2021 at gmail.com, and that is listed in the description box. If you would like to join the Facebook group where you can see a lot of that kind of activity, um, that's listed in the description box as well. If you've never been on Facebook, just download the Facebook app and then just go out there and search on groups and put in lessons learned and it's a public uh, group and you can just get right on in there and start seeing things. There's our first four patch. So you're going to make 16 of these. Make 16 of these and they'll go four by four. Four by four, yes. I kind of drew a little picture first. This is my little picture. <laughs> so they are four patches, four, four patches, about four, four patches. So that will be actually uh, without the seam allowances, it'll be 40 inches by 40 inches. So all I have to do now is just keep going. There's one with little spools and cross stitch on it. Isn't that cute? And you don't have to really think about which side you're putting them on because you can twist and turn them around once you're all done. 
and arrange them however you want. So make a make one or two of these this week. If you have some charm packs, if you don't have charm packs, just find you two three quarters of a yard pieces of, of fabric and, and do a two color one. This is also a good size for a um, table topper if you want a table topper. And I'll tell you what inspired me to do this was one of the finishes last Friday. One of our viewers sent in that um, yellow and black and gray um, patchwork quilt like this. And I don't know if her, her squares were five inches, but I have a feeling they were. They may have been a little smaller. Um, but yeah, that that uh, that is what made me think to to do this because it's a quick uh, way to pump out stuff. You know, we've been doing the notebook covers, we've been doing the pillowcases. I'm still working on mine, I don't know about you. Um, but this also is something you can just pump out two or three baby quilts real quick or some table toppers or table runners. You can make uh, several table runners out of a charm pack. You can make these four patches and lay them end to end, maybe four four patches. Put a little border around the edge, maybe miter the corners, um, and make that would make cute gifts too. We have such beautiful fabric, we don't really have to have a whole bunch of complicated pattern pieces each time, you know. I love to work with patterns. I love working with uh, even difficult patterns, but uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, good old patchwork is, is where it's at. Patchwork and straight line stitching. Why not? That's how it all started out, isn't it? So I don't mind doing that at all. And at least now we don't have to do it by hand. <laughs> We can use our sewing machines to do it all. Love that. <clears throat> also got my um, Barn Star Sampler blocks done this week. I'll show those to you on Friday. Uh, I did show you one on Friday this past week. I had one done. I got the other one done. So that's done for the month. Uh, Unfortunately, I did not get into the happy days yet again this week. So it was just, you know, I just have to be in a certain mood to do that. It's kind of like the duster, you know. And I have to be honest about the duster. The duster will happen. But I'm hoping, <laughs> and I had to be perfectly honest about this. I was kind of hoping maybe I would lose a little more weight before I put that together. Um, it just pains me to think that maybe I would make that up and put all that effort and then it would be too small. And I'm not one to do a lot of um, custom stuff. I mean, I can take in a seam and put in a dart where I need to, but adjusting sleeves and shoulders and collars never been really good at that it's most of the clothing that I have made and I've made a lot of clothing I've been able to get a pattern my size make it and wear it and there have been times where I've done that very thing and it didn't fit so <laughs> this one kind of pains me because you know tulip pink fabric um, an expensive pattern uh, the time involved already with it so, besides the fact that we're going into fall and winter and I don't need a spring coat yet, is detaining me. And also the fact that I would really like to lose a little more weight right about when I get that done so that when I finish it, I can show me in it. <laughs> is that too much to ask? Am I too vain? Probably. But <laughs> here's another four patch. See how these go together so fast? I don't know. I will get back to that. I will get back to it. I know that I will. 
Um, but what was I talking about? Oh, the happy days. Oh, my. You know, ever since I messed up my, um, what is that? Teflon sheet? Ever since I messed that up, I've been like not wanting to mess with that sticky applique stuff. So I need to get out of that because I am not going to get behind any more than I already am on that project or I will never catch up. I remember making a video long time ago, long, long time ago, and the title was Don't Ever Get Behind on a BOM. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that title keeps flashing in my head like you need to practice what you preach girl so yeah I need to I need to get back into that uh, this week for sure two weeks gone by well actually it's probably been more than that well no that's not true three weeks ago I did spend my two hours and got you know pretty far there's that one and uh, I don't know. I just need to get back into it. Mary, are you out there? We need to sew together on Thursday or whatever day you can. That's my long arm lady. Speaking of which, Mary is called Broken Dishes Quilt Company. That's also in my description box. She's my long arm lady. And uh, she has finished another quilt for me. It will be coming on Wednesday, so you will see it on Friday. Yes. Guess which one it is. Some of you that have been around for a while, <clears throat> you're going to remember that I did, uh, Pat Sloan had her block a day in March. But you know, I don't think it was this past March that I did it. I think it was last year. I think it was 2022 March. It was because I did that black and white one for for this year. So yeah, that's that's what's coming back. The green beans. Remember green beans? I did all those greens and oranges and yellows and um, yeah. I've been anxious to see how that's going to turn out. So. So I had her do that one. And then I think the next one that she's gonna do is the vintage mystery block that we did the sew along with last last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's next. So you'll be seeing green beans on Friday. Speaking of Pat Sloan, she's getting ready to do uh block Wednesday. A new one this week the 20th pretty sure it's the 20th and I think I showed you all this is the pattern autumn wonders so that's coming up and I've got a fat quarter bundle over there that I'm going to use for that so I'm kind of excited to get that started that'll be a, an easy one block a week thing to do Let me know in the comments if you're going to do that one with her as well. Um, she has a website called um, I Love to Make Quilts.com. You can go there and, and get that, that free pattern. And then each week, where these blank spots are, these blank, the white squares, she'll give a new pattern each week. And you go on there and you can either do it directly from your device and make the block, or you can print it out. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's what's coming up. Um, here's another one. And then this one that I have all cut out and ready to go, that I cut up the first month, uh, first week of this month. Remember I told you, get a pattern down you've been wanting to do and some lovely fabric that you bought for it. And, and do it <laughs> so I have had mine cut out for what's today the 18th I've had it cut down cut out for 18 days I have yet to start sewing so that's going on my list this week for sure yep it is 
I love these yellows. Look at that. There's one with cherries. So cute. This will make a really cute blanket for for a child or baby, baby shower. I think I might make one up in a in this baby stuff, this ch uh, child's fabric, and also one for a table topper. Last year I made a fall table topper, which I'm using again, but I think I want to make something more, I don't know, something a little more dramatic, something a little more adult. So I'll make a kid one like this, and then I'll make an adult one like this. Adult as in grown up. Okay, so here's another little, this one has pink in it, but I think it'll be okay in this quilt, or will it? Well, I also have purple too, and that doesn't always really go well with red. But I can't, I can only get rid of two out of this whole thing. So, yeah, I better use this one. I'll show you here in a second when I get this done. <clears throat> I tell you what, this allergy thing that I've had is just hanging on. I still cough. I still clear my throat. I still have itchy ears. Um, I think it's ragweed. Ragweed, according to the local news, has been terrible here this year. I don't know if it's a bumper crop or I've just been outside more and I'm breathing more of it in or what, but I'm tired of it. It's kind of disheartening to go into fall winter season already having been sick. So I hope I'm not low on immunity and I'll be sick all winter. Can't have that. Who has time for that? Nobody has time for that, do they? Oh, I wanted to mention that um, we're only less than 100 away from 10,000 subscribers. So, um, we're gonna be having some celebrations, <laughs> giveaways, merchandise for that coming up really soon. So keep on the watch if you can, if you're watching this video right now and, and you haven't subscribed and you see the word subscribe anywhere on your screen, touch it and then also hit the little bell that says all and you will never miss a video. And although <clears throat> in a monetary sense for me, more subscribers doesn't necessarily mean anything, but uh, having a higher amount of subscribers does have an effect on what YouTube does with you as far as recommendations and such. So, um, you know, go on and hit that subscribe button because, I mean, you're here, you're watching, and still, I look at the statistics uh, on my channel, and most people say this that have channels, you look at those um, analytics, and um, sometimes more than half the people that are viewing your videos are not subscribers, which is puzzling to me. There's that one. So, I mean, people have their reasons. They want to protect their privacy, thinking maybe it would make them vulnerable or something. Uh, I don't know that to be the case, but I understand. I understand completely. Um... But yeah, if you subscribe to, to YouTube channels and you haven't subscribed to this one, but you watch me from time to time, why not just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and get us up over that 10,000 mark. Then what'll be after that? 15, 20, 25? We'll just see how far we can go, right? And also wanted to mention that the Facebook group is up over it is right at this moment. I saw it maybe a couple hours ago. I have 475 in there. So 
any of you that aren't on the Facebook group and would like to be, I guess I've already mentioned that once, haven't I? But 475, I feel pretty good about that because I've only had that group, what, a couple months? I'm not even sure when I started it, but it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Of course, my sense of time is probably not very accurate. <laughs> As you get older, it kind of goes away. <clears throat> Let's see, should I put that purple with that one? Or should I separate those out? I think I should keep that together. You ever talk to yourself while you're sewing and kind of reason out what in the world you're doing? I have to. I mean, technically I'm talking to you right now, but this is in the past. <laughs> I'm coming to you from the past. The weather has been so nice here. I hope it's been good where you are. We've had a little bit of a early fall feeling to the last few days of, of summer here. And that's always nice. Um, I think I mentioned the other day that uh, we've been preparing a rental house that we have for sale. And it needed quite a bit done to it because the people that had lived there had been there for a while. So the exterior hadn't been painted for 10 years because that's how long we've had it. And so uh, Mark has been painting the outside of the house and we painted it a little bit of a lighter color. It was sort of a grayish green before. And so we decided to go kind of a stone color. It's a, it's a white really, but it's called stony or something like that. Um, so we had to paint two coats and then we're putting some black trim on it uh, under the window seals and uh, just making it look nice again so that we can put it on the market. Um, so he's been busy with that and sometimes I have to help with things on that front. So this past week has been a little, a little cluttered in my mind and in my schedule and things like that. So this one, it has kind of two lights, but there's a light one that has all the colors, pastel, and then this. I don't know how that's going to come out, but we're just going to go with it. There's going to be another one like that here. This one has dots, and this one has leaves, but we're going to go with it. <coughs> Okay, so let me get my calendar down. My, um, where is it? Here it is. I wanted to show you the picture for this week. I'll put a picture up here so you can look at it while I'm reading about it. It's called Berries and Geese, 69 by 69. It's by Linda Lyle of Irwin, Tennessee. A class with Sue Garman on needle turn applique inspired Linda to make Sue's basket blocks. Selecting the fabrics and placement of the colors is the most enjoyable experience for Linda. Many of the fabrics were K-Facet designs. She double bordered the piece with her favorite machine piece designs and then completed, completed, completed? There's a typo in here. And then completed the wall quilt with extensive hand quilting. It was a prize winner at a mountain quilt fest in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So wow, all that applique there in the center beautiful and then the um all those flying geese and the cave fabrics that she used as well as the cornerstones are stars 
I think that's an Ohio star, isn't it? And then that, that border is kind of in a French braid configuration. Beautiful. I tell you, you make any quilt out of K facet and it's going to be a winner. Very pretty. Lots and lots of work and all that quilting on there. Tiny, tiny quilting there in the center especially. So that's the quilt of the week. And while I'm here, I might as well put in here what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. Wednesday, we're going to have another panel uh, video. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do the... Hold on, let me get it. I'm going to do the State Park one. So, the State Park I have is the Great Smoky Mountains. I showed this to you earlier in the month. Try to show you the top two. There it is. And it's interesting that this um, quilt that I just showed you in the uh, planner, she uh, won a prize for it and in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which is where this is. Well, Pigeon Forge is just outside of Great Smoky Mountains, but it's all there together. So, one of my favorite places in the world. So I'm going to be putting an interesting border around this. So if you have a, a national park panel like this, th these are from Riley Blake National Parks by Anderson Design Group. So if you have one of those, then whatever I'm gonna do is going to work for your panel. This is big. This is, uh, I wanna say it's 34. 34 or 36 wide. So if you have one of those, then you'll have an idea ready to do something with it. The cool border. Okay, so I'm going to work on that Monday and Tuesday. So that's called the panel project. And then Wednesday, let's, let's put Thursday down for the happy days again. I think Wednesday I'm going to put down my, um, well, it's going to be Pat Sloan's Went Block Wednesday. And that's uh, Autumn Wonders. So that will be a block that I will do. And then also on, uh, probably on that day, I might start on my Harvest Square Dance. I might put myself a time limit on that one and say one hour. And then the Happy Days, I'll put, maybe I should just put one hour so I don't get burnt out. That might be what, what's been going on with me. It's two hours, it's too long. Let me just give myself one hour. And then I'll be seeing you guys again on um, Friday for, for telling you what the weekend will hold or if I have any special plans for the weekend uh, sewing. So that looks like what's gonna happen. I have a commission job to do too. Um, let me get that and I'll show you. I have a friend who wants a... Y'all may have remembered, if you're on Facebook, you may remember the other day that I was asking for a horse panel. If anybody had a horse panel. Well, this is what I ended up with. I bought this from uh, Quilted Twins. Uh, you all recommended that website for panels. And so this is the pan, this is gonna be a bed size quilt. And this will be in it somehow. So this is what it is. I hope you can see that. I can't tell if you can see it or not. There's a white horse. 
and it has this these bright pink accents to it and then of course there's the blue too um so i have to design a quilt around this um and i have i have this let me just hold this up i have this oh i can't that's my microphone i can't do that kind of have this <laughs> And this, this, and this is the back. So stay tuned and let's see how this turns out. I have ideas. I'm, I am going to do some, either some ribbon stars or some kind of simple stars around it and then several borders. Um, I'm not sure I need to I need to get paper and pencil out and start designing <laughs> so that's that needs to get started I told her four to six weeks and that was like two weeks ago so <laughs> I really need to get started on that uh, let's see got my little purple one here and then I want to do this purple one let me do one more of these for you while I got you and that way you can see what I have finished and how quick you can get this done and not mess anything up because it's such an easy project now I have one subscriber who's become quite the friend and uh, we talk a lot and she does um, lots of children's quilts for charity and um, if you want to do something like that 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 would be great for this type of quilt you don't have to you know do any fancy designs they, there's a need it's kind of like the alaska quilt drive you know that the so yeah boys do I shouldn't say boys because there's a girl too and the mom, uh, the Soya family. Um, you know, the quilts don't have to be fancy dancy. They, there's just a need and if you can feel the need then, you know, use your resources to help out if you can. You can donate quilts like this and that's what she does is she keeps her local um, CPS or whatever you call it some some you know where foster children are she keeps them supplied in what they need for in the way of blankets from little babies all on up so I just think that's neat Okay, we got one more here. Let's see how many we have. One, here that one is. One, two, three, four, that's one whole roll. Five, six. So I need to make 10 more of those and I've got myself a baby quilt. So get in there in your stashes, pull out your charm packs or cut yourself up some charm packs. You can do that with your scraps too. Just make a bunch of five inch squares. You need uh, 40 of your prints and then 40 of your main color so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna finish this up here and and be done with it and maybe you'll see this on Friday too pretty good chance all right so I hope you have a great great week and you can get some things done in your sewing room and I will see you back here on Friday for the panel video and then back again on Friday for finish it Friday where you will see my finishes and yours 
And so have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye.